Hey everybody, welcome back to another video on this channel and today we have a look into dynamic components, how they work in Vue.js and Nux.js, what the pros and cons of different approaches are and how to use them properly. Here we go. It's quite common that you have to switch out components on demand if, for example, a user does a different action or well, if you have a big application and say the global state is different, let's show a different tab in a dashboard or maybe just because your business logic requires it, right? So let's have a look at our demo application, how you do this in Vue, what approaches there are, as mentioned in the intro, and what's the better way, plus some Nux goodies and how things work under the hood. As usual, our application is pretty minimal, and this time it's the most minimal, besides our little flash uh, avoidance strategy here with a bit of CSS, because your app to view is fully empty. And, well, that's because we will create a few extra things. So first, this pages folder can also fully go, and now we can create a new thing called components here, and let's add a dynamic uh, component to the view here. So we have one of our dynamic components, and we create a simple scaffolding saying, okay, maybe h2 dynamic component uh, the view. So far, so good. Our script part, well, we don't really need that, so we can stay with the template part, and now we copy the whole thing and say another dynamic component, because we have, of course, one more. And make sure to update this here as well, so we don't wonder what's happening. All right, now our goal is to show these components based on a simple button, right? Let's say button, and of course, usually, you know what? Well, let's do it differently. Let's do it in a nice way. We would use a checkbox for that, right? So we have type, say checkbox, and maybe we have also a label around that, saying we have a label, let's uh, say, switch to uh, another dynamic component, question mark, and that's it. And now we want to say, okay, we have a V model bound here, saying is switched, something like that. And the idea is if, if it's switched, we want to show uh, another dynamic component. And if not, of course, else we just want to show the dynamic component. And to be honest, this is not the biggest challenge, right? In Vue, the docs show pretty nicely, but don't worry, this is not just a super basic video. We also go more into that. So let's see. Of course, we can just quickly set up our ref here. Is switched equals ref false by default. That's uh, pretty fine. Also, it's very important. I'm using a Nuxt application here, so we don't need to import ref uh, from Vue. This is not necessary. Also the same it applies when you use unplug and auto imports, right? So we can ignore that and just go with the flow here. So while we have a checkbox and we should see if the checkbox works, yes, it uh, will be, but let's uh, actually check that. Then next we have to figure out how to properly set up the components so that they actually switch. To double check that they actually work, let's log is switch true uh, falls in here. So we actually have some demo output, and let's uh, display it real quick in the browser. And here we see, let me quickly zoom in for you, it switches, it works, the vModel binding is fine. Of course, we could test it with yet another thing changing stuff, but I think that's that's good enough. We all know how vModel works. Now to the tricky part, well, to the easy tricky part, we want to say, okay, if it's switched, we want to show a component, otherwise another. And we can start saying, yeah, you know what? We can just use another dynamic component in here. We say v if is switched, right? Fine. Okay. And then we have a dynamic component. And then we say v else. This is the most basic way of doing this, right? And if we now have a look in the browser, we'll see that the, another dynamic component is rendered because it's set to true. And if we change it, it's dynamic component. So far, so good. But what if it's truly dynamic? So let's imagine we get the type of the component from the API, let's say a CMS, or we have so many that we don't want to list all of them straight away. Plus, right now, they're all imported too. So that's not ideal. What then? And of course, in this case, Vue also has a solution called component is. So we can have this component called component here. And in colon is, in this prop, we give the name of the component. So now we can say, okay, const uh, component to render, or commonly uh, I'm used to, to put in Pascal case. Now we can use a computed here and say, you know what? If 
uh, is switched uh, the value then we have another dynamic component let's put it on a new line of course and otherwise we just have dynamic component right we save this and put that in here component to render put the comment on top because well that's how it should go and now if we check the browser we see nothing we broke it it doesn't work the console doesn't tell us anything on reload nothing it's broken oh no let's fix it of course it's broken because we well we didn't really do what uh, the docs say the docs say we should pass in the name of a registered component already or the import to it and even though we have the components in here in components we don't really register them right there is we, there's no code doing that for us at the moment so we just pass in the names the component they they don't really exist and uh, well if we have a close look actually what's rendered in the browser let's uh, have a look at it again then we see here in the dev tools that the components actually rendered as like a custom element and if we switch that then we also see here it is another dynamic component so very simple views just doing what it should it renders the component but view is not recognizing it so as mentioned let's fix that and of course there are a couple of ways to do that so the easiest way to fix that would be to import these things right we can say okay let's import uh, another dynamic component from and we can say either from the path so let's say slash components uh, another dynamic component of view right another option in Nuxt is we can import dynamic component from hashtag components so far so good and now we can say you know what let's remove these quotes because now these are the actual imports right and this feels a little bit better already but well it's still not ideal because first of all of course we want to make sure that the dynamic component here is also a named import and not a default import because components in Nuxt has them all right all the components available and then uh, in the browser it looks a little bit better because it works again right but we have one big downside now because first of all we have imports and well i don't know how you think about that auto imports at least for me a bit nicer but even that that's more a matter of preference of like signal versus noise there's another thing we have a synchronous import right now for both of these components meaning ah, the performance will suffer but just imagine having all the hundred components could, could possibly land there if it's cms all available straight away that wouldn't be nice so let's uh, figure out a way to fix that but before let's have a look at a third way to import a component not only through an import for the path or an import through hashtag components and next which is not available in view there is a third one let's check it out the third way of importing component as just mentioned is and it also works in view let's try it with dynamic component um, we have to get the quotes here again and then we call a function called resolve component and and this function comes from view itself straight away and says hey please uh, resolve that component um, the only problem is we can't use it everywhere we, we have to make sure that in here in resolve component is only a string so it won't work with an expression of a statement with a variable it has to be a clear string and then if we switch back to the browser we see okay things also work as before so here we have the third way but still the same problem applies we have also this is then a synchronous lookup import it's not the, too nice so let's let's improve that because also we don't want to have resolve components everywhere necessarily one thing we can do of course is leverage views async components so in Nox we could do it by using a lazy prefix by say let's get lazy dynamic component and we could apply the same thing here to say let's uh, write that in quotes and say lazy another dynamic component and this would work perfectly fine as mentioned we would use async components here and they would get both their own chunk and of course things would still work that's uh, that's pretty good and if you refresh the page and then take the dev tools and filter them by dynamic component we will see okay yep all right it's an own chunk and if we switch that then another dynamic component is loaded as we would have expected so that's pretty cool uh, i also explained it more in depth in my lazy uh prefix video what it does behind the scenes how the whole define async component works in view please check it out you know where to find it 
So really worth it. Even if you don't know Nux, that's also helpful for your view knowledge. But nevertheless, we're not done yet. There is yet another way to deal with it because of course, we don't want to have all the resolve components in there necessarily. So the last way dealing of these scenarios is technically saying, okay, we define these components globally. So while in view, you would just say, let's create a view plugin and register them. In Nuxt, you can just say, okay, let's add a dot global dot view uh, suffix here and let's change it to dot global dot view. So that's a bit easier. And now we go back to our app dot view and instead of resolve component here, we can actually say, yeah, let's just pass uh, lazy another dynamic component. And this is pretty interesting because we don't even say, hey, this global component should also be available lazily. Nux does it for us. And switching back to the browser will show us, okay, this works fine. Yep. Also, after refreshing the page, the same idea. Wonderful. So this is one way of defining a global component. We have a look how it works inside in a second. But next, we want to check an yet another way, the second way of a global component, which is creating a global folder and then moving the dynamic component in here. And also then we can get rid of the resolve component. And after that, things work as expected beforehand. So in the browser, of course, things work as before, also after refreshing. And here we see the things are loaded. But one important difference to, to see here straight away, we see that the chunks, so like let's, let's refresh here, they are loaded straight away again, right? So we, we have to be careful. Global components can be helpful if you know that your component will appear on various pages or as mentioned before, if you have CMS and you don't know which component will appear, the problem is it will get all their own chunks and it's a bit more difficult to improve performance for them because once again, they all have their own chunks. You can't group them nicely. There is some manual work to do if you want to, but also that highly depends on the project. Nevertheless, let's check out how the dot global suffix works and same idea with the global folder and what Nuxt is doing under the hood for them. And to do that, we open the source file of Nuxt packages, Nuxt source components templates, because in here we have all the Nuxt plugins that actually render a template. And one of these templates, you won't believe it, is of course a components plugin. So in here, down all the way in line 54, time of recording, we have a Nux global components plugin. And in the setup, we just say, okay, for all lazy global components, or these are just like all the global components, right? We say Nux app dot view at dot component, and then put in the name, the component, and also register the lazy version of it. So funnily, Nux under the hood is doing the same as you would do in your view application if you would register your own global components. So a little bit of magic, abstract way for a suffix or a global folder. And of course, you can also like customize that, use another global folder, change names and so on, so on. So sky's the limit there. Nevertheless, now you know how to use dynamic components. We will have um, a deeper look inside what that means for performance. I mean, I already mentioned the difference between having an own async chunk versus being maybe embedded in, in a page if it's needed uh, and how that, what that means, how the bundle would look like in another episode. Also mentioned before the lazy uh, video for the prefix there, I've also shown that a little bit. Nevertheless, stay tuned for that because I know performance is an important topic. Uh, made a few videos on that already, but there is more to come in the future for that too. But that's it for this episode. Of course, let me know what you think. If you handled dynamic components before, what's your preferred option? Mine is, well, resolve components. I'm not the biggest fan of manual imports, cluttering all your, I don't know, first 10, 50, 100 lines. So yeah, let me know what yours is. And of course, also check out the latest stage of your episode on YouTube or any kind of podcast platform of your choice. And I can already say, uh, stay tuned, check out the other later videos and see you next week as usual for another one. Stay safe, happy hacking. <laughs>